good day to you all. Today we will be solving problems about rotation of rigid bodies. And to get our problems, we will get it from the University of Physics book of Pearson. Let us go first to our first problem. Problem 9.14. A circular saw blade 0.18 meters in diameter starts from rest. In 6.35 seconds, it accelerates with constant acce angular acceleration to an angular velocity of 148 rad per second. Find the angular acceleration and the angle through which the blade has turned. Now, let us determine our given. Given, we have a diameter of 0.18 meters. We have a time, 6.35 seconds, an angular velocity of 148 rad per second, and the initial angular velocity, which is 0 rad per second. Now, we are looking for angular acceleration. And of course, the angle through which the blade is turned. Before solving this, we first need to determine what our equation is. So the equations that need to be used is first for the angular velocity. Angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus alpha which is the angular acceleration times time. And for our state or our angle, we need to use one half of a initial angular acceleration, or rather, initial, initial angular velocity plus angular velocity times time. For our solution, we need to plot in first our given. So 148 rad per second, which is our angular velocity, is equal to 0 rad per second plus the angular acceleration times time. So, let's derive it from the original formula in order for uh, only angular acceleration or alpha to be left in the one side. So it will be 148 rad per second over 6.35 seconds. Which will give us a value of 23.3 .3 rad per second. This now is our angular acceleration. Let's head on to the angle. So again, let's plot in the point. Or rather, put all our given to the given equation. So... 1 half times 0 rad per second plus 148 rad per second multiplied by 6.35 seconds. To simplify it, it will be 74 rad per second times 6.35 seconds, which will, which will give us a value of 470 rad per second. This now is our angle. Let's head on to the next problem. In the charming 19th century hotel, an old style elevator is connected to a counterweight by cable that passes over a rotating disc, 3 meters in diameter. The elevator is raised and lowered by turning the disc, and the cable does not slip on the rim of the disc but turns with it. At how many RPM must the disc turn to raise the elevator at 20 cm per second? To start the elevator moving, it must be accelerated at 1 8 of gravity. What must be the angular acceleration of the disc? In rad per second squared. Through the what angle in radians and degrees has a disc turned when it has raised the elevator 3.30 meters between the floors? Let's first solve the first problem. But let us determine first the given. We have a diameter of 3 meters, so we can change it into radius of 1.50 meters, as we all know, at one of the diameter is a region, or rather radius. Next is the, angle, is the linear velocity of 20 cm per second. And now, what we are looking for is the angular velocity. So, let us determine what equations to use. So we have an equation of V, or rather linear velocity is equal to R, which is the radius, times the angular velocity. Now for the solution, uh, which is angular velocity is equal to V over R. It was derived from the original equation. Now, we have a velocity or linear velocity of 20 centimeters per second, but it needs to be in meters per second, so let us change it to 0.200 meters per second. Now, we just need to substitute it, so we will get uh, 0.200 meters per second over 1.50 meters. So, give us a value of 
0.33 rad per second. But this is not yet our angular velocity because it needs to be in RPM or rather or rev per meters or rev per minutes rather. So one pi rad is equal to 0.5 rev and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So with there, we'll get a value of 1.27 rev per minute. And that now is our angular velocity. Let us head on to the part 2b. Let us determine first our given. We have, of course, from the previous one, the radius of 1.50 meters. We have now the linear acceleration with 1 8 of gravity. And gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we are looking for the angular acceleration. Now let us head into the equation. Our equation is linear acceleration is equal to radius times the angular acceleration. Now, just like from the previous problem, the A1, we need to derive it from the, our original equation. So angular acceleration will be equal to uh, the value of linear acceleration over radius. Since we now have the, the linear acceleration as given and also the radius, we just need to substitute it. So angular acceleration is equal to the 1 8 of 9.8 meters per second squared over 1.50 meters, which will give us a value of 0.82 rad per second squared. And this now is our angular acceleration. Next is the last problem of question 9.18. Let us determine the given. Of course, we need the radius of 1.50 meters. We also have an arc length now given, which is 3.30 meters. Now we're looking for the angle, both in regions and degrees. For our equations, or rather equation, we have the arc length is equal to radius times the angle. But we're looking for angle, so we need to derive it from this equation, which will give us S over R. Since we have the given values, we can just substitute it. So 3.30 meters over 1.50 meters, which will, give, which will give us an angle of 2.20 rad. Now, to convert it into degrees, we need to multiply it by 180 degrees over pi rad. The rad will cancel each out, so it will be 2.20 times 180 degrees over pi, which will give us a value of 126 degrees. And this now is our ang angle in degrees. Now for our last problem. A wheel is turning about an axis through its center with constant angular acceleration. Starting from rest at t is equal to zero, the wheel turns to 8.75 revolution in 11 seconds. At t is equal to 11 seconds, the kinetic energy of the wheel is 39 joules. For an axis through its center, what is the moment of inertia of the wheel? Let us determine our given. The axis is at center, so no additional force is needed. Or no inertia. Needed more. Next, let us go to the time. We have a time of 11 seconds and an angle of 8.75 rev and the kinetic energy of 39 joules we now are looking for the moment of inertia so the equa equation to be used is equal is kinetic energy is equal to the one half of moment of inertia times angular velocity squared and of course we don't have angular velocity given so we need to solve for it so the angular velocity will be equal to the angle over time. Now let us solve for moment of inertia. So we need to derive it in order for only the moment of inertia be left on one side. So now we have, we multiply first by two. So two times two kinetic energy is equal to one half, or rather is equal to moment of inertia times angle of velocity squared which will give us an equation of 
moment of inertia is equal to 2 times kinetic energy all over angular velocity squared. But we don't have an angular velocity, so we need to solve for it first. So our angular velocity will be theta over time, or angle over time. But we can just plot in the theta even though it's given, because first we need to change it into rad. So we need to multiply 8.75 by 2 pi over 1, because 2 pi rad is equal to 1 rev. It will give us a value of 55 rad. Now we can plot in. So 55 rad over 11 seconds, which will give us 5 rad per second. Now we have our angular velocity. We can then plot into the equation we derived. So 2 times 39 joules, which is the kinetic energy, all over 5 rad per second squared, which is our angular velocity. Now it will give us a value of 3.1 kilogram meter squared. This now is our moment of inertia. Now that's all. Thank you for listening and for staying with us in solving problems about rigid bodies. If you have questions, you can email me at lawrence underscore alfonso.su.edu.ph. Thank you and have a good day.